All right, so I just finished building escape. Unfortunately, I'm not doing the end of the challenge because a lot of modeling and setting up a level, but lots to take away. I want to jump into the next section for Toon Tanks, as I mentioned last week. But yeah, this Toon Tanks part of the course looks to be, uh, I don't want to say shorter, but it's fewer lectures than the building escape by far. I don't want to say shorter because it's kind of like, you know, how many questions are on the test? Three, well, they each take you an hour, that kind of thing. And I figure I'll just do it over the course of the week because I think it'll be straightforward, not easy, but straightforward to do. And it looks like it'll be super useful. I want to focus on concept art this week. I think that's my goal is to do some art lessons on Udemy and focus on concept art for the game and just general narrative. I haven't recorded the intro for that though, so back to you where I came from. Apologies for lack of intro, but welcome back to the devlog. Bit of a slow week, but uh, let's just jump into what I got done on Tuesday. I finally jumped into things on Tuesday after not getting anything done on Monday. I started off with a Toon Tanks project lecture right off the bat and then explored the docs a little bit for Unreal. The Unreal docs are definitely a wealth of knowledge, so I'll be closely following those when I wrap all this up. I'm feeling a little directionless with the devlog because I feel like it's more of a learning log at this point, but that's only temporary and keeping on top of the devlog each week is forcing me to be creative in the best of ways. I have recently been rereading the subtle art of not giving a f And there's this part about identity that I really resonated with and launched me into a bit of an existential crisis, which you'll see in the Trello section of this video, but being an aspiring anything is easier than failing at that thing before succeeding, so I'm just plowing through these Unreal projects because they give me what I would argue to be a false sense of success, but nonetheless, a sense of success. Didn't end up getting through much because of issues with installing a minimal theme and I had to get to schoolwork and readings for my internship that day as well. That being said, since I'm sticking to this course and aim to have it completed by March 19th, Seashell Development will be largely a focus on art for now, so let's define some tasks over on the Trello board. Hey everybody, so today is Wednesday, it is 7.16pm February 3rd, and I'm not sure if this week was actually tough or if it was just self-fulfilling prophecy, but for development, it's not looking great. Earlier today, I had a bit of a existential mental breakdown, which it happens from time to time. I think the most that I can expect is to get stuff done on the Udemy course on a Friday, but I wanna stop using the Udemy course as part of these devlogs, and I wanna make it all seashell work. So what I'm gonna do tomorrow, right? Tomorrow during my lifestyle recording block, which is after my seashell development block, I'm gonna show you guys what my Trello board setup is looking like. Because now that it's harder to make time for seashell development or harder to stick to things, it's time to fall back on the systems. And that's what systems are for. There are times in my day where I think, what day is it again? And I'll say that all the time. And uh, sometimes I think, wow, I use calendars and I don't even know what day it is. But to put it one way, <laughs> I use calendars so I don't have to keep track of the day. That's pretty much why I do it. And, and you know, it's not totally true. If I thought for more than a second, I'd be like, oh yeah, it's Wednesday today. It's just something to say, all right, 7 to 9 p.m. is a personal time. I'm gonna look at the calendar. Oh, tomorrow I have this, this, and this. Okay, perfect. It is 7.20, so I'm not making my personal time cut off tonight, especially, yeah. I mean, it looks like I just woke up or something. It's okay, it's okay. Nobody cares about what you look like, Mark. Nobody cares, nobody gives a crap. This is the look. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, my existential breakdown was, uh, how, you know, what is my purpose in life and how do I make something that persists beyond my own death? Deep thoughts, <laughs> deep thoughts. You know, just the norm. It's like, do I want Seashell to be that thing? Do I really want to be making YouTube videos? Is that really what I want to be doing? Do I really, like, yeah, the client, it, it was a whole, thing and so when I say that you know that took me three hours out of my day it took three hours out of my day plus I, I need to edit this LaCroix video which I'm tempted not to upload now that I'm editing it a little cringe and by a little I mean a lot of cringe when I normally record videos like this I don't really see me I think the dev there's like devlog me which is the closest to me then there's productivity me which is like you know I put on a public speaking character and then there's the videos like the LaCroix thing where I'm like who is this guy? Because I connect the most with me who edits videos, not the me who records videos. Anyway, this is off topic. This Trello award is gonna be of utmost importance because if I say, okay, it's hour half of seashell time, what's next? I need that decision to be made so there's as little friction as possible for me to jump into seashell. I will need to keep consistently learning on gamedev.tv, not because I really need to learn Unreal, but because I need to keep in touch with the programming side of this whole project. And right now I'm simply not ready to start coding seashell. The plan is to mention my progress of Unreal in the devlog, sort of like I did at the start of this one, and then work on what I need to work on. So if that's sitting down and looking at the design document, or sitting down and working on the concept art, no matter how, I gotta believe that I'm, you know, good at something, you know, no matter how it turns out, something to visually direct me, it can't all just be learning. I gotta spend some of this devlog applying things. 
In a moment, we'll jump into Trello. I'll announce the Discord and do our community section, although there's not too much from the comments, but a lot of support. I really appreciate all the supportive comments. Don't forget, if you're working on something, to leave it down in the comments below. And then, yeah, maybe I'll talk a bit more about structure, maybe more about willpower and discipline, but nobody really cares about my half-baked philosophical ideas. Save those for VGT. So I'll see you in a sec. All right, we are over in OBS, and let's go ahead and jump into the Trello board. <laughs> So this is a program called Trello. It's a Kanban board system or more generally known as a task board system, I guess. And I use it for various projects. So this is a seashell board, but other examples might be this channel itself, all of the videos I'm working on, ideas I have, what's in writing, what's filming, what's editing, what's in review and thumbnail. And then I have four different columns for the different types of videos that I consider that I make. I am speaking way too fast. Back to seashell. The reason why these systems can be so important is because when we sit down to work on it, we know already what we want to work on. We can fall back on the systems to tell us what's coming up, what's to work on now, what needs to be done in the future. I set this board up a really long time ago and have barely touched it since. And now that I'm you know, finally struggling for time or finally struggling on what to do for Seashell, it's about time I lean on it and use it quite a bit. If you go over here, there's a card called Board Navigation, a link to the Notion page where I might have more stuff set up and what all of these labels mean. I'm not going to go through all of this, but the general gist of a task board at its very core, what you'll find if you look up task board is what's coming up, what's to do now, what's done and ready for a test, I guess, and what's completed. That's like the really basic thing. So when you finish one thing, you just drag it to the next column. It's got a little more in-depth than that. Arguably a little too complex, but pretty much I have on the left here resources and exercises. So when I was in Paris, I found these character design quarterly magazines and they've been super inspirational just in terms of art and general character design. So reading those is helpful. Animation practice, I plan on linking rigs here. As you can see, March 5th, 2020. This is when I made this board and whew. and then I have a little inspirational quote here. The next column is current release tasks. So for the prototype that I want to be out by March 19th, I have a list of the current tasks. Technically all of these should be over here. For sake of example, I'm moving everything over here, but for the current release, these are the things that I need. So I need the first floor model line. I need a, the main menu drawn out and to be done. This is where too much complexity comes in. So when I finish the main menu visual element, for example, I might change from visual element to implement. That's why I have so many labels. Man, it's really just, it's one of those days. Uh, I'm just trying to do stuff that makes me feel productive. <laughs> Everything for the current release task. That's the gist of it. Uh, island description, seashell model. The thing that I want done for this prototype is the girl running around in the, in the home to find a seashell and get transported to the island. That's it. I don't want the start of the game yet, like the actual start, why she finds a seashell in the first place. And I don't need the whole island level flushed out. I just want her to show up. That is the prototype. Just get a feel for things. Get started on the project. Next up, we have current sprint. I'm currently in a software engineering class this semester, which is kind of cool. And we're going to go more into this. But the idea is that sprints are what you're working on now. It's the current iteration of work. So sprints can last from one week to two weeks to a month, I believe. I think for me, it'll be best to do sprints in weeks because these devlogs are every single week. So today's actually February 4th. I don't see myself getting anything done for Seashell, unfortunately, aside from doing this. So like right now we have Toon Tanks. I'm going to go ahead and say... Yeah, see, I have three things for zone one design. I'm going to go ahead and move girl concept art into current sprint. Oh, right. So this is the sprint for the upcoming week. So finishing Toon Tanks, girl concept art, first floor overhead sketches. Technically, I've done one of those, but I need to do more. I feel like the game design document should be in resources just because it's going to be consistently iterated on. I should sort out the game loop, the very simple game loop. I've sort of already done it, so most of the work there is done. And I'll go with island description because I think I need the description of it before I start drawing it. In terms of coding, I'm working on Toon Tanks you know, in terms of art, working on concept art and sketches. And then in terms of the game, I'm working on the direction of the island, where the island is going. So the current sprint will start February 5th and we'll go until what, February 12th or whatever. At the start of every day, which is the idea of the Trello board is you check what the team's working on, but I'm my own team right now. So at the start of the day, we say, okay, what's today's goal? Well, I'm gonna put Toon Tanks on there because I should be working on that daily to finish it in the end of the week. Uh, I think game loop is something I can definitely do manageably. And we're gonna leave the rest there for right now. Then when the day is over, we, you know, I'll drag Toon Tanks back, for example, if I haven't finished it. Going further into things, I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know, I finished the first floor environment model. I bring it into test and review. The Trello board will become more useful and more accurate when I start developing specific things in the game. This is when it would be, okay, if I bring this into Unreal, does it feel right? What needs to change? Um, and I can, you know, put comments in there. So then, you know, test it for next release. I say, okay, it's done. Everything's good. In the future, I'll have something, actually, you know what? This is definitely for the prototype and I would consider this 
an implementing thing because it's something I write in Unreal. I don't need to make anything for it except code. I should honestly add a coding label on here. So this would be when this gets finished, uh, test it for next release, brilliant. Oh, it's got a bug, so I bring it to bugs. And then when I come back to current sprint, you know, I pick from here, from current release tasks, all that stuff. So technically, I feel like bugs should also be in front. And then if I finish something, it's incompleted. I'm gonna say the written script is completed just because I'm I'm not really working on, like I'm not relying on the script at all. We're gonna put this back in current release tasks. This is obviously not a bug. Yeah, so I'll say that this upcoming week, the idea is girl concept art, first floor sketches, a lot more of those. I need to draw a lot for this. Um, and I wanna draw a lot, I just need to get there. <laughs> Work on a description of the island so that I can get ready to draw it the week after and then implement everything that following week. So I wanna be done with two tanks this week and the next one the other the following week and work on the game loop as a logical thing. Next week's devlog is again, gonna be a little bit of a special case. I have no idea what I'm doing for it yet. Maybe it'll just be like a time lapse of modeling or coding or something, like a three minute video. Sometimes I like speed codes, done some in the past. Anyway, so yeah, that that's how I set the Trello board up. Now that I'm, you know, putting aside time for Siege Chell and <laughs> finding things to work on, I need to know what to work on next. And in a sense, this restricts my choice. I come up with everything possible to work on here. And then I choose what I'm gonna work on this week. And that is a lot of art and tune tanks. I'm still feeling unsure about Unreal. The docs I've been looking through and they've been super helpful. So there might be some cases where I just jump into things. By March 19th, I need something off the ground in Unreal Engine and I will have that. I'm very uh, set on having that. Just having this timeline can be super, super helpful. And it works for a variety of projects. I did this for school one semester. I'm a very visual person, so it's super nice to have. Again, systems like this are things that you just can fall back on. I used to be someone who always worked on things in his head, and while I could still probably do that, there are times when I it just leaves too much choice for me. And so I fall back and I say, okay, today, Tune tanks and game loop. I'm gonna move these off because I have I'm not gonna get to these today. Maybe game loop, but maybe not. And I'm gonna get into the habit of every single morning checking this board and say, okay, what do I want to work on today? Uh yeah, so that is it for the Trello board. In just a minute, we're gonna jump into the community section, going over some comments that we got last time and the announcement of the official Discord server. Stay tuned, see you in a second. Hey everybody, so this is kind of random. So a misconception I think a lot of people have in general is to not pay attention to things that they aren't immediately focused on. For example, studying computer science in university, you know, the core classes, you know, don't worry about them. I disagree entirely. I think they're super important. I think your grades overall should be an important thing to focus on, but I think it's even more important because you should pay attention to the classes you don't know that you know nothing about or that you perhaps like have no interest in just because you never know what you might learn. Aside from how I can prove that from my own experience, for myself at least, I'm currently reading through something about an outline of Aristotle's poetics, which is kind of a I guess I'm like an analysis on tragedy because I'm taking a, an expressive culture performance class this semester at university and it's talking a lot about what makes the perfect tragedy. What makes, it's just an outline of it. I'm not reading the poetics or anything. It's just funny because I realize how much I can use this stuff to build up the narrative of seashell. Keep things in mind all the time. You never know where sources of inspiration might come from. I didn't think this class would have anything to do with my devlog, not a thing. And yet, here I am thinking, huh, if in the ideal tragedy, Aristotle claims that the protagonist will bring down their own, will bring about their own downfall because they don't know enough. How can I, how can I incorporate that? How can I incorporate this stuff? Obviously, Seashell's not really a tragedy or, you know, in this sense. It keeps you thinking. And when you can find these external things that you are invested in and somehow can connect them to what you might not be invested in, it's a way to become invested in things that you might not be invested in, if that makes any sense. I know I'm excited for this performance class, but I didn't expect to make connections here. And so my energy is feeling a little better today. Just went over the Trello boards. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into the community section and stuff. All right, it is. <laughs> All right, I'm feeling much better. Community shout out time. We've got a few comments from some other fellow students. So Ryan, Federix, I hope your semesters are going well. Sam, I'm glad you were inspired by the, the whole art spiel that I gave. Shantae, I hope your language learning journey gets back on it. Recently, I've been taking Russian, I guess more seriously. Uh, I'm diving back into Russian for dummies. My grammatical analysis class is inspiring me in a lot of ways. My semester has been a weird start so far, but it, it's, it's gonna be ramping up soon, I imagine. Speaking of community, the Discord server. Finally available, I guess. There'll be an invite link at the top of the description down below and in the rest of the videos from this point out. Pretty much I've been running a Minecraft server since I was about 13 and so it kind of evolved over time. Everyone grows up, right? And a lot of people were posting about projects they've been working on, different programming things they've been doing, some art, some animations, all that stuff. And so we kind of transformed that 
into a into a hobbyist Discord server. So if you go ahead and join, there's like an intro video and everything, and there's some roles that you can get from the artist role to the developer role to the writer role. We're gonna, you know, hopefully have more frequent game nights. If there's a study buddy role for studying together, there are different video pings. So you don't get pinged for every single video. So if you're just into the devlogs, you'll get separate pings for those. But we want to do things with community events. And the main idea is showcasing what you're working on. So we have a community category, which is, you know, post accountability updates, what you've been working on. If you're looking for ideas, if you want to showcase a project of yours, you'll have, you know, your general chat for general conversations. And we have a bunch of roles that you can get by leveling up. So you get level one, you get radiant rookie, blooming beginner, and then dedicated member, I think is the highest role that someone has right now, but there's, they go up there. This probably isn't the most exciting plug for a Discord server, but we're still going to work on the exact name and working on a new logo, I guess. So that's kind of the last thing we need to work on there. Yeah, invite link in the description down below. Would love to see you there. Shoot me a ping when you're when you're joined. And we'll see. I have absolutely no idea how many people are gonna join. The current community has gotten the ball rolling and I think it's been a great start. So I'm excited to keep it going. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this week's devlog. Really, really not much. I do apologize. Next week we have the stuff for our current sprint, which is the girl concept art, first floor overhead sketches, island description, tune tanks, and game loop. I definitely want to work on tune tanks today, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag that into today's tasks, but I want to get this devlog up on time for once. I also have to go record some arrow for a, another video that's coming out tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching the devlog. I do appreciate it. Next week we'll see what I jump into. These will be slow as things ramp up and as my school semester rolls out, but I'm excited to keep on making them. Slow progress is better than no progress, so don't forget to let me know what you're working on down below in the comments. Yeah, I'll see you next week. Thanks yet again for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.